Thanks to the internet, many of us have become desensitised to shocking and gory videos that probably would have traumatised people a hundred years ago. Still, every now and then you come across one that sticks with you. In today's video, we're going to take a look at one of the worst videos I've ever seen that's shrouded in mystery and speculation. So what actually happened to the face split diver? Let's investigate. If you enjoy internet mysteries and generally disturbing content, feel free to subscribe and turn on notifications for more content like this. If you're interested in supporting the channel, you can become a Ko-fi member or a channel member to gain access to uncut videos and other perks, or you can leave me a tip by clicking the thanks under this video. Thanks to anyone who considers this. This video will contain vague discussions of a video that some might find extremely distressing. Viewer discretion is advised. You can become a Ko-fi member or a channel member to watch an uncut version of this video which features extra details that were unsuitable for this cut. I started making YouTube videos around three years ago now, and I was lurking in the disturbing parts of the internet long before that, so my morbid curiosity has led me to see some things that I honestly wish I could unsee, this video being one of those. I can't definitively say it's the most disturbing video I've ever seen, I think it'd be impossible to rank them to be honest, but it's certainly up there, so if you're squeamish or easily upset, I'd strongly recommend that you don't look for it. It's certainly not for the faint-hearted. That said, if you're generally okay with these types of videos, the analysis will probably make a bit more sense if you have seen it first. It's definitely not necessary though. While the video doesn't have an official title, anyone who has seen it will instantly know which it is when I say, Diver Face Split Video. Obviously I'm not going to show it in this video, it's very easy to find online for anyone who's curious, I'll just be providing a very vague description before moving on to an analysis. The video is very low quality, that's probably a good thing considering what you see in the second half of it, and it begins with a group of friends diving off a promenade into the sea below. One individual dives straight into the water with no problems, and his friend goes to follow. He runs and jumps, but seemingly misjudges the distance and his foot slips a bit, resulting in him diving head first onto a ledge below. When he enters the water, it begins turning red around him, as someone hurriedly swims towards him and piercing screams can be heard from the likely traumatised people who just witnessed the accident. The video cuts to show him in the hospital, somehow still alive and breathing, but in a very bad way. The doctor is literally holding his face together. Another doctor can be heard saying what apparently translates to, Where do I begin? Where do I begin? The first time I saw this video, I'm pretty sure I closed my laptop and thought, that's enough internet for today. But for some time, I just couldn't stop thinking about it. Not just because it shocked me, but I really wanted to know what happened after. Did he somehow survive? Was the video even real? My first question initially seemed to have an obvious answer. Looking at the state he was in after the accident, how could he possibly have survived? But it was honestly baffling that he survived so long. The second part of the video should have been a post-mortem clip. I honestly can't fathom how he was still breathing in that condition. The human body can endure unthinkable injuries. It has evolved with the main purpose of simply surviving. So while it's certainly surprising to see that he was still alive in the hospital, it's not beyond the realm of possibility. As for the authenticity of the video, that's something that's rarely questioned. Most seem to just assume it is real. It's not exactly a video most people would want to re-watch many times to analyse it in depth though. I'm not knowledgeable enough on this stuff to definitively determine whether or not it's real, but I reluctantly took one for the team and re-watched it numerous times, looking for any obvious signs that could hint that it's been edited or staged in some way. The thing that stood out to me most was the blood in the water. First of all, it's a very bright red colour. I know blood that hasn't had chance to oxidise yet is lighter in colour, but it looks almost luminous. 
Especially considering the water looks dark and somewhat murky, you wouldn't expect the blood to be quite so bright. As I said, the video is very poor quality though, so perhaps the colours don't look accurate as a result. After the first clip ends with the boy's friend dragging him to the ledge, there's a very brief clip showing a lifeboat and what appears to be numerous people surrounding him. At this point, the whole area of water is totally red, and to me that doesn't look very realistic, even considering a small amount of blood can look like much more in water. They also appear to be on the ledge and not in the water, and even that is totally red. So in my non-expert opinion, I personally believe that small part of the clip has been edited. That's not to say it's totally fake, maybe it's just been enhanced to make it look more shocking. Between the point where the boy enters the water and when his friend drags him to the ledge, there's a few seconds where the view of the camera is obstructed. When we see the friend swimming to him, the boy is maybe two to three meters away from the spot he hit the ledge. Considering he's not moving at all now, he's just motionless in the same place, I'm not sure how he moved those two to three meters in the few seconds we didn't see. I guess you could say that the timing of the view being obstructed is kinda convenient, and if this was set up, it would give the boy a few seconds to swim to that area, then act as if he's unconscious. But the timing could also be easily explained by the person who's filming freaking out at the unexpected accident. For a split second when the camera is pointed back at him, there is no visible blood in the water, then it suddenly appears. There's also no stream of blood from where the boy supposedly hit the ledge, which you would expect if he'd floated that distance. As for the next part of the video showing the boy in the hospital, I'm fairly convinced that's totally legit. I'm not really sure how it could have been edited to look like that without some pretty skilled CGI work or some crazy prosthetics. The kind of effects you'd see in a movie, not a low quality gore video. It's certainly strange to see that this is being filmed, you wouldn't be able to do that in England or many other European countries, and presumably America too. I don't even think you'd be allowed in the room with someone while the doctors are working on such a serious injury, but of course things are different in other countries. Overall, I don't really have any doubts about the second half of the video filmed in the hospital, and while you could argue that the first half could have been set up, or at least edited slightly, there isn't enough to totally convince me it's fake. It's kinda hard to tell for sure if the boy actually hit the ledge. If he didn't, he very narrowly missed it, so I find it hard to believe this was planned in advance as a setup, because intentionally diving in so close to the ledge would quite frankly be a stupid idea. I guess it's possible that he did narrowly miss it and in the moment decided to take the opportunity to make it look like he actually did hit it, but it's impossible to say. I watched that part of the clip many times in slow motion, pausing at each frame, and you can't clearly see him hit the ledge. Not surprising considering the low quality of the video, but it is possible that he didn't. It is worth noting that the diving clip and the hospital clip might not actually be of the same person. I wasn't able to find any news articles or other reliable sources covering this accident around the time it happened, which by the way is another reason to question the authenticity. This might be because I'm googling in English and this obviously happened in a different country, but this video is certainly not unheard of in English speaking countries, so it is surprising that there's such a lack of information. There are a couple of more recent articles focusing on the re-emergence of the video, and some give backstory but don't cite any sources that reported on the event at the time, it's all just hearsay. As a result, and because we can't see the boy's face in the first clip, it's hard to know for sure if the two clips are linked or if they show totally different incidents. I personally think in the clip in the hospital, what we can see of the body looks a bit bulkier than what we can see of the boy when he's just about to jump. The low quality of the video makes it hard to even see properly, and the difference isn't significant enough to say one way or the other. Some have pointed out that the boy's skin tone looks darker in the first clip. I don't think this is enough to prove they are different people though, as that could be due to a difference in lighting, a different camera, or even blood loss. The next thing to consider is whether or not the injury that can be seen in the hospital clip could be caused by the accident we see in the first clip. 
This is where I'd really appreciate the opinion of a medical professional, so if you can provide any insight, please let me know in the comments. For what it's worth, in my non-professional opinion, it's not totally unbelievable, but I'm also not 100% convinced. And if I had to guess the cause of the injury from the second clip alone, there'd be many other things I'd guess before an accident like what we saw in the first clip. The injury in the second clip is vertical, from the eyebrows to the jaw. From the way the boy dived, you'd expect the ledge to make contact with the face horizontally, even allowing for him panicking and moving around in the air. He certainly didn't end up sideways when he reached the bottom, and it's surprising that he dove head first, yet the top of his head is intact. The teeth also appear to be intact. I find it highly implausible that he would make contact with the ledge in a way that would cause the injury in the second clip, yet not lose or even chip any of his teeth. If I were him, my first instinct when I knew the dive was going wrong would be to put out my arms, either to protect my face or attempt to push myself away from the ledge. And in the hospital clip, there doesn't appear to be any injuries on the arms. Taking all this into consideration, if I had to put money on it, I'd say that the boy in the hospital clip is not the same boy that has the accident in the first clip. We'll come back to this in a little while, but for now, let's get back to the first question I had. What happened to the poor boy in the first clip? As I said, there isn't much verifiable information at all online about this. It appears that the doctors are speaking in Arabic, so if anyone watching this video also speaks Arabic and can find anything else that I don't cover in this video, please let me know in the comments. I did come across one blogspot site discussing the video by a man named Robert Lindsay, who is apparently a journalist in California. The blog is referenced on a number of posts on Reddit and other sites where people ask for some backstory on the accident, and it does provide some potentially useful information. There's a warning on the page that goes to show how disturbed some people were by the video. Bad reactions to the video, including nausea, vomiting, dry heaves, paleness, goosebumps, shivering, shaking, spinal chills, sweating, headache, rapid heartbeat, anxiety, nightmares, sadness, crying, inability to stop thinking of the video, and pain in the face have been reported. Adverse reactions, some debilitating, have lasted up to two weeks. Please exercise caution in viewing the video. According to this site, the accident occurred in Beirut, Lebanon, which seems to be accurate. As looking at photos of the Manara Promenade there, it matches the bit of the scenery that can be seen in the video. Same street lights, tall buildings in the background, etc., and Arabic is the main language spoken in Lebanon. Here are a few excerpts from the site. This is one of the hot viral videos going around. It actually appeared on the net around the third week of July 2009, but it only started going viral in a huge way around the second week of September 2009. In general, it never has a name. It first appeared on Arabic and Turkish sites and finally found its way around the net. A teenager, a 16-year-old boy, dives off the seaside promenade in Beirut, Lebanon and slips before the dive. The slip causes him to miss the ocean and instead hit the concrete slab below where fishermen fish. People are wondering how he could survive such an injury, and the front part of his brain may indeed have been injured, but others are saying that it appears to be intact. At any rate, basic things like breathing are done by the brainstem. The brainstem does not appear to have been injured. There are a lot of rumours saying that this video is fake, but it is a real video. We know this because people in Lebanon are reporting it. Some had friends who were at the promenade that day, others said it was reported in the Lebanese press, and others say they were aware of stories on the street about the video. There is an article in Arabic from the Lebanese press online proving that this event occurred, but it's in the archives, and looking through the archives costs money. This event occurred in Beirut in the second week of June 2009. The teenager and his brother were showing off their diving skills by diving off the Manara Promenade, which is right across from the American University on the shore of Beirut's harbour. This part of the promenade is called Al Rosha, and it's long been popular with divers, although officials have always frowned on it. 
It's a long way off the Manara Promenade to the ocean, over 40 feet. The first part of the video shows his brother making a successful dive. The victim and his brother had made several jumps before and everything had gone fine, but this time the victim slips and disaster unfolds. This part was shot with a Nokia cell phone that shoots dark in the afternoon. The segment was shot by a girl at the scene who can be heard screaming, oh my god, oh my god, someone called the civil defence, in Arabic. Some say his friends would not shoot movies of him diving, but the girl filming is just some girl who was there filming the divers. Lots of people use their cell phones to film the divers. This actually is not the original video from Lebanon. In Lebanon, there were two videos, the first one of the diving accident. This one started going around Lebanon later in the day after the accident. In the original Lebanese video, there is no fade out after he hits, for one thing. The original video from Lebanon is not currently available. The second video was shot in the hospital and started going around later. The video on my site is the two different videos spliced together. The second part of the clip is the same kid in the hospital, but was shot with a different cell phone so it looks different. The hospital staff is definitely speaking Lebanese Arabic. This part of the clip was shot in the brightly lit ER of the American University Hospital, which is only a quarter of a mile away from where the accident took place. That's why things are so much brighter in this part of the clip. As you can see in the hospital footage, they have the boy intubated, which is an excellent idea. However, he is not on a ventilator, nor are there any signs of monitoring equipment such as pulse oximeter. Also, they did not put him in C-spine precautions, C-collar, backboard, strap down. The physician is focusing on holding his face together, possibly in order to protect the airway. Some US medical personnel say the video is fake because he is not receiving proper medical care. Keep in mind that this is Lebanon. He's getting reasonable medical care, but he is not receiving the best of medical care. In this case, the best care would be the following. Put the victim in a drug-induced coma for most of the time. Start with the major things like checking the frontal bone, forehead, to ensure the brain is safe. Maintain vascular supply to tissues. Deal with the airway. Victim would need a tracheotomy. Try to save his vision and go from there. After that, try bone fusions slash pinnings to repair bones and muscle reattachments to repair muscles. Skin and soft tissues would be dealt with last. There would surely be a hell of a scar afterward. In this case, all the surgeons could do was to stitch up the deep and severe wounds in his face, although some clinicians on the net say that a good ENT could patch this kid up, this poor guy could not be saved. All the surgeons were able to do was keep him alive in the ICU for two days before he died. The death was due to spinal fracture and in particular severe internal bleeding in the brain. If this site is to be believed, then we have our answer. The boy in the video suffered unimaginably for two whole days before he finally took his last breath. I'm struggling to think of many worse ways to go, and I can only hope that he was unconscious, or at least on so many pain meds that he didn't feel the full extent of his injuries during that time. Problem is, Robert doesn't provide any credible sources to back up this story. He claims that there is a Lebanese article about it, but I'm not sure how he verified that, as he implies that he hasn't seen it because it costs money to look through the archives. I certainly wasn't able to find this article or any other references to it, but again, that could be because I'm searching in English. Regardless, this article was only mentioned in relation to proving the event actually occurred, not what happened to the boy or anything else covered on the page. Robert states that the video is real because people in Lebanon are reporting it, and among various links to forum posts that also contain nothing to substantiate the story, he links another blogspot site that features a quote, uncredited report from a live leak user. The comment begins with, This tragic accident took place in Beirut the second week of June 2009. I know because I was standing there the day after this accident happened. It then goes on to describe what happened with the exact same details Robert stated on his site, 
So he clearly got the information from this comment and this comment alone. The live leak user prefaces every detail with, I was told that. They don't say who told them, nor do they provide any evidence to back up what they were allegedly told. Considering every post and website I could find online that explains what happened to the boy either directly links Robert's site or quotes it, it seems that everything that is known about the backstory comes from this one comment posted by an anonymous live leak user, and I don't really consider that to be a reliable source of information. I think it, and the video itself, is enough to suggest that an incident almost definitely happened, but it doesn't prove that the second clip in the video featured the same boy that has the accident in the first, and it doesn't prove that the boy survived for two days and then died. I think it goes without saying that it would be a miracle if the boy survived the accident. It's not impossible, but assuming he actually made contact with the ledge, he fell 40 feet onto a solid surface face first, so it is quite unlikely. As I said earlier, I'd be surprised if he even survived until he got to the hospital, and because there appears to be no solid evidence linking the two clips in the video, I'm becoming even less convinced that the second clip is of him. The first clip is horrifying enough, but if you wanted to ensure a shocking video like that goes viral, that's certainly a reason to tack on another, even more horrifying clip to make it look even more shocking. If the boy in the second clip isn't the same one that had the diving accident, then what happened to him? According to Robert Lindsay, one rumour claimed that this boy was attacked with an axe in Saudi Arabia. While it's plausible that the injury could have been caused this way, it's unlikely that it happened in Saudi Arabia, as the doctors in the clip are apparently speaking Lebanese Arabic. Again though, I don't speak Arabic, so I can't confirm that. Another rumour suggested that this injury was caused by a gun and was possibly self-inflicted. Robert does not believe this to be the case because he doesn't think that the injury is consistent with that cause. I would personally disagree. Again, not an expert, but I've seen other videos of the aftermath of such incidents that resulted in injuries similar to what can be seen in the hospital clip. The first reference of the hospital clip I've found online was posted on the YNC.com. It's since been deleted, and an archive of the page doesn't show the video itself, but going off the title of the video and the comments, it's almost definitely the hospital clip alone, without the clip of the accident, and it's claimed that the injury was a gunshot wound. Wayback Machine's first archive of it was on the 5th of June 2009, however a couple of comments elsewhere claimed that it was posted the month prior, in May. Robert's site, and the uncredited report from the live leak user, claim that the accident occurred in the second week of June, and the latest that this second clip could have been posted online was within the first week of June, possibly even earlier. So either the second clip shows a different person to the boy who had the diving accident, or the live leak commenter was wrong about when the accident happened, which would imply it's an even less reliable source, as they were claiming to have been at the scene of the accident the day after it happened. Interestingly, the earliest mentions of the first clip in the video that I found online do not feature the second clip after, so it seems that both of these clips were initially shared separately, then joined together at some point later. Furthermore, I found a few comments on old forums from users who claim to have seen the video before June 2009, with a couple of them stating the video first emerged around 2006. These comments were posted within a couple of weeks of June 2009, so it's not like it was years later. I think this gives some credibility to their claims, as it's unlikely they first saw the video two or three months ago and somehow mistakenly thought it was three years ago. More commenters around this time also thought that the injuries in the second clip were caused by a gunshot, which makes me wonder if the second clip actually circulated at least three years ago with the gunshot backstory, then when the first clip of the diving accident first emerged, possibly in 2009, someone linked them together and claimed it was the same person in both clips. From everything I've seen, I believe this to be the most likely theory, and if that is the case, it leaves us with the question of what happened to two different people after these clips. 
We've already speculated a little on the boy in the first clip, if he did make contact with the ledge, and if the video is totally unedited, meaning there was a significant amount of blood loss, I think it's quite unlikely that he survived, and he may have died at the scene of the accident. However, if the blood was edited, and if he either narrowly missed the edge, or perhaps the lower half of his body or his arms made contact rather than his head, it's certainly possible, perhaps even very likely, that he survived. He may have lost consciousness, hence we see him floating in the water, but we can't see his head make contact with the ledge, or any other part of his body for that matter. Dismiss the second clip, and this could well be a poorly executed dive that almost ended in disaster, but didn't. As for the boy in the second clip, assuming it's a different person, you might wonder how on earth someone could survive an injury like that, but people can and have in the past. In fact, there was a study published in 2019 that reviewed patients who were admitted to R. Adams Cowley Shock Trauma Centre between 2007 and 2016 due to gunshots to the face, and out of a total of 69 patients, only 18 of them died, meaning 74% survived. In patients who were younger than 65, the survival rate was even higher, at 83%. So it seems that if an individual doesn't die from their injuries straight away, they have a surprisingly high survival rate. Sure, we'd have to make a couple of assumptions to reach this conclusion, and maybe I'm being a little too optimistic, but if the two clips show two different people, and particularly if the first clip was edited to make it look worse than it actually was, specifically the presence or amount of blood, then there's actually a half-decent chance that both individuals survived each separate incident. That would explain why there seems to be no credible reporting on either of these clips, if the boy in the first clip maybe broke an arm and had a few bruises, it probably wouldn't be front page news. And while the second clip, for obvious reasons, would appeal to the online gore community, if the injuries were self-inflicted, it likely wouldn't be reported on by any official news sources. So that's my take on the viral video. After reading every single relevant website, blog, reddit post and forum discussion I could find, I'm fairly certain that the video shows two different people, and I at least think there's a chance that one, if not both, survived each separate incident. I really hope this is the case, as the alternative is truly horrifying. However, I absolutely acknowledge that my research may have been somewhat limited by the fact I could only go off sources in English, and the first incident almost definitely happened in Lebanon, and the second was in an Arabic-speaking country, possibly also Lebanon. So as I've said throughout the video, if anyone watching this lives in Lebanon or speaks Arabic and can find any more information, I'd really like to hear about it in the comments. Before I wrap this video up, I'd also just like to mention that there's a possibility that the full video is no longer available online. Robert Lindsay's blog spoke of the original video that at the time was not currently available. The video on his blog was two minutes long, that's the one that's almost always shared on Reddit and elsewhere. In this version, there's a cut between when the boy jumps and when he's in the water. I found a longer, three-minute version of this video on watchpeopledie.tv that doesn't cut out at this point, and also shows the person swimming towards the boy and another who dives in after, dragging him out of the water and onto the ledge. It seems the two-minute clip was simply shortened for relevance. There is some speculation online that there was an even longer video at one point, which would potentially introduce a lost media aspect to this, and it's possible that that may allow for more accurate speculation, or even clear up some of the questions we're left with from the three-minute video. However, I haven't been able to find a longer version, or even enough information on it for me to be sure that a longer version exists, and I'm not sure what else we could see in that video that would clear anything up, unless it was actually a different video taken by someone else. In which case, seeing the incident from a different angle, possibly even with a better camera, could give us a much clearer view of the incident itself, and therefore a better idea of if there was any contact with the ledge, and more importantly, whether or not the boy could have survived. 
If that video showed the incident in a more positive light, it was never going to garner as much attention as the one that makes it look like he was seriously injured, especially with the hospital clip tacked on too, so if it ever even existed, it's not surprising that it faded into obscurity. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts in the comments, plus any other internet mysteries you'd like me to cover. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing. Huge thank you to my Kofi members and channel members whose names are on screen now. I really appreciate your support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Thursday in a new video.